We welcome you to our weekly prayer service. We usually gather at our church uh, every Friday evening at seven o'clock for prayer. And a lot of you come over there and we really do miss getting together for prayer in that way. But thank God that we can meet online and pray together, even though we are far removed by distance. We are one in the spirit and we can pray together with one mind and also learn some things about prayer. As you know, uh, we usually not only pray, but we also teach a little bit about prayer on Fridays because our purpose on Friday is not just to just gather and pray one hour a week, you know. One hour a week prayer is not enough. We need to pray every day. And uh, so one of our purposes is to enable people to pray every day and spend time with God in prayer every day effectively. And so on Friday nights, we pray as well as teach a little bit on prayer so that our prayers are effective and our prayer experience is very fruitful. All right. Now, the most important thing in prayer is not our needs, our problems, and so on. Because sometimes we think when we come in prayer, we just come with all our problems in our mind, with all our needs written down, you know, in a long list of prayer requests. And we make sure that we carry these things because we think that's the most important thing. Uh, but in prayer, that's not the most important thing because I've showed you already that Jesus himself said, your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. So our heavenly father knows your needs, knows what you're going through. Before you give him the list, he knows already. Therefore, the list is not the most important thing. Your problems, they are not the most important. The most important thing is who God is. What kind of a God? Our God is, how great he is, how good he is, how faithful he is, how he's a promise keeper. These things are very important. And that we need to keep before our eyes when we pray. And in order to enable that, we need to go to the word of God because the word of God is the thing that projects all of these things before our eyes. So we are doing a series called Praying the Bible. That is, using the Bible as a tool in prayer. Praying, using the Word of God. That's what we do. And uh, you can actually use any part of the Bible, New Testament, Old Testament, all parts of the Bible you can use. But the book of Psalms is a very um, great aid in prayer because many of the Psalms were written as prayers originally. And many of them are written to worship God, to praise God, to pray to God, and so on. And therefore, it is uh, very convenient for us to use them. And so we've been looking at this book of Psalms and going through many of the Psalms. And right now, for the last two weeks, we looked at Psalm 42, Psalm 42, and Psalm 43. I showed you that those two Psalms must be put together and looked at together. Why? Because they deal with the same subject. They're written by the same author and they're written about the same subject. What is the subject? The subject is depression and its cure. Depression and its cure. Now, this is a very important subject, I believe. You know, I, these days, as I'm preaching about it, I all of a sudden find that everybody's talking about depression, you know, on television. YouTube and everywhere, I see a lot of people uh, talking about it and looking into it and so on. Depression is something that visits everyone. We have all had a bout of depression uh, at some level or the other. Uh, during some circumstances in our life, we have experienced depression and we've had to deal with depression. Therefore, we need to be very knowledgeable about it and particularly spiritual depression. Spiritual depression has to do with depression that is related to our relationship with God. Losing faith in God, you know, losing confidence in God's word and not really feeling God's presence in our lives and feeling like God has not answered our prayers and that kind of a thing, you know. 
spiritual depression has to do with these things right and the psalmist mentions his depression here as he goes through it and that is why these two psalms are very valuable six things are mentioned about spiritual depression and let me go over them again and uh, and let's pray first of all for these things we have looked at already uh, last week and the week before and then we'll go on to the cure which i want to talk about for part of the prayer uh, service today the first thing is six causes for depression we mentioned one is forced absence from the temple of god or from the place of worship for some reason the psalmist is far removed from the place of worship place of worship is some thing that he loves he the author seems to be a musician singer songwriter and so on and so he misses this wonderful experience of being in the presence of god enjoying music singing and worshiping and so on and uh, uh, he misses being there in the house of god and for some reason he is in a far away place he is not able to come and that is why psalm 42 begins with these words as the deer pants for the waters so pants my soul for you o god my soul thirsts for god for the living god when shall i come and appear before god see that last line that's where you begin to see what his problem was when shall i come and appear before god he's talking about going to the place where he believes god dwells the temple the tabernacle and being there in the presence of god when shall i be able to appear before god when shall i come to the place where god dwells and meet him there and have an encounter with him there that's his question is terribly depressed about it and that has run him down really and i showed you how that when you are a true believer you long for it and uh, every sunday as you go to worship see how relevant this passage is you know today we are not able to go to church we are sitting at home and uh, it's talking about that you know and uh, when you're not able to go to church regularly as a true believer you really miss it because you miss the fellowship Uh, the singing together the praising god together that atmosphere of joy and gladness that atmosphere of faith where every believer comes together and we believe together stand together pray together worship together and then hear the word of god together and appreciate it together as we hear it and receive the word of god and go home with hearts filled with joy that is a wonderful experience that no true christian wants to miss and if your heart says as the deer pants for water so my heart pants after you oh god if that's your feeling about it then that is proof that you are a true christian if somebody claims to be a true christian and he doesn't have a desire to go to church doesn't care about whether he goes to church or not i don't would doubt whether that person is a true christian or not a true christian will be drawn to the house of god we love this encounter this corporate gathering worship singing praising god joining with others uh, in worshiping god that's a wonderful experience all right and the second reason is the unbelievers taunting him saying where is your god <laughs> that is in verse 3 unbelievers taunting saying well you prayed what happened you know your god hasn't answered prayer uh, where is your god no is he going to do anything about it is there a god at all no these questions are brought before us and the devil uses these taunts from unbelievers to really work on our faith system you know the devil uses it to uh, make us come apart in our faith Uh, where we begin to entertain doubts and we begin to wonder whether god is there he's hearing us why has he not answered why things haven't changed all these questions come and we drown in a pool of questions and doubts and you got to be very careful you know that is why if you're given to depression you should be careful that you are not just listening to 
doubts and and listening to things that are raising doubts in your heart you need to listen to things that develop faith in your heart like one great preacher that i know used to say starve your doubts and feed your faith wonderful saying i'll never forget it starve your doubts and feed your faith don't feed a doubt don't listen to things that cause more and more doubt don't be in the company of people that only cause you to doubt and question you know get in the company of people that help you to believe and stand in faith during tough times and if you are quarantined or if you're not able to get together with people like on occasions like this and in circumstances like this i'll tell you you got the bible you got the word of god you got the sermons on the youtube and so many sources are here we are so blessed today we're never without anything so you need to go reach out to these things and and draw from these things and feed your faith starve your doubt you got to do that you know thirdly the memories of better days that brings depression memories of better days the psalmist is sitting in a far away hill that's the context here he's sitting in a far away hill looking at jerusalem you know in a far away place and he remembers how he used to go there with all the people singing praising dancing their songs were they were known for their singing and dancing and worshiping god they had such a joyful worship that's why even the babylonians said when they were in captivity in babylon the babylonians came to them and said sing us some songs of zion the israeli people are known for their skill in singing and playing music they were quite advanced in those days in that and god has given to them some nice wonderful songs and even the gentiles loved those songs that they heard these people sing because it was so beautiful even today when you go to israel you hear this type of song very beautiful songs that will make you dance that will want you to jump up and dance that kind of songs so they say please sing us the songs of zion and they say how can we sing the lord's song in a strange land their captives there their heart is not good they are not in jerusalem their heart is paining how can we sing the lord's song in a strange land they say all right so he remembers all that the corporate gathering getting together with the people going there in great numbers for a feast gathering there praising god and worshiping god offering sacrifices being in the very presence of god that experience he misses fourthly the overwhelming trials of life you know life is sometimes full of trials one after the other we know what trials are all about you know and uh, overwhelming trials of life is one thing that the psalmist talks about in verse 7 here eh? he says that the trials are like waves they are like waves and billows that goes over you one after the other it keeps coming you think this is the last one but then more comes it just keeps coming night and day and all the time it seems like and he's overwhelmed by all of those things you got to watch out when you face problems difficulties like we're facing right now when you're not able to run your business when you're not able to carry on your profession when you're staying at home and not able to move out you're not able to earn money like like you used to and do your use your talents like you used to and so on you got to be very careful because that is something that can really bring about depression fifthly the failure of god to act quickly on our behalf you know we feel like god has not answered our prayers and uh, therefore we begin to kind of fall apart and uh, that is the psalmist concern here also he says why have you forgotten me why do i go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy why do i have to live in a situation like this god are you not looking at me why do i have to go through this why have you forgotten me he says so he's reached a point where he thinks god has forgotten him and sixthly we saw how 
the attacks from the ungodly, deceitful and wicked persons trouble us and cause depression. We see a world filled with ungodly, deceitful, wicked persons and their activities and what they do and uh, you become disheartened very much. We're living in a world like that, a world full of problems, wicked persons all around, deceitful, ungodly people doing ungodly things. And that is a great discouraging factor and leads you to depression. You got to be careful. You got to make sure that you focus your attention on God and uh, keep yourself uh, from falling into the pit called depression. You know, it's like a pit. You know, you fall into it, you cannot climb out of it very easily. You know, therefore, you need to be very careful not to get into that. It's not to descend into that pit called depression. Amen. Can we just stop for a moment and just let's worship God and praise God today uh, because God has brought this topic up before us. God knows our need, you see. I'm very surprised sometimes. I'm always surprised at the way God brings us to certain passages and helps us to deal with certain truths at the right time. You know, during this pandemic, you know, I would have never thought of dealing with things that I have dealt with, you know, last three, four months. God has been so gracious to me as a preacher to give me the right kind of things to preach, things that will be very relevant to people, that touch the hearts of people and help people. Ever since I started on depression a couple of weeks ago, I've been receiving phone calls from people from our church and others, you know, that know me and, and they've been saying, please, please, go on, talk a little bit more about it. Help us uh, to understand this thing, how to go through this pandemic, how to go through this problem, how to get out of this, you know. And uh, so I, I'm trying my best to do that. And God has already, God is going in that direction, you know. And it's amazing how God leads us to these passages. So we're dealing with depression right now as the people are going through it. You know, some people are saying, well, I'm not able to sleep because of the problems. I'm using tablets and, you know, I feel like I'm descending into some kind of depression. I don't know what to do, you know, how long this is going to go on. I'm very worried and so on. So I want you to know that God is reaching out to you today. First, you need to praise God because God is speaking to you, speaking to me, speaking to us, helping us. God always sends his word. He sends his word and heal them, Bible says. So God knows that we need healing. He's sending his word. He's sending his word to you. He's reaching out to you right now. The very fact that we are talking about this, you ought to be glad because God, it's like you are in a pit and God is sending you a rope to catch and climb on. So this is the time to get out of depression. This is the time to receive God's help in this matter. So think about it like this. You are in depression, you are in that pit and God has arrived. God is reaching out to you. God is going to help you, my friend. So let's pray. Let's lift up our hearts and give thanks to God for he's here. He's reaching out to us. He's speaking to us. He's ministering to us. His word has been sent to us. He's giving us the rope to climb on. There is a way out because God has arrived on the scene. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you because you have seen the need of the people. You have seen the need of the hour. You have seen the need of thousands and thousands of people in our nation, in our community, in our church, in our world, oh God. You've seen the need. Therefore, you're reaching out to them and uh, you are ministering to them right now. Thank you, Lord, for stretching forth your hand. Thank you for the words that you're sending right now, for the word of God that you're sending forth to help people right now, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sending forth your word, sending forth your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You always send your word and you heal us. And may your word bring healing. 
May your word bring deliverance at this time, O Father, and bring healing to people, O Father. Thank you, Lord. We pray for the people out there in the world that may have a chance to hear this today. Oh, let them know that God's help has come to them, that God is reaching out to them. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let the people of God know that God is reaching out to them to try to help them. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Like your word says that you brought us out of the miry clay and set our feet on the rock to stay. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your bringing people out of this miry clay of depression. And you are setting people on the rock to stay there, never to drown in depression again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in that, we not only mention the six causes that are mentioned here in these two chapters. We also mentioned some additional causes of depression uh, that the psalmist does not mention here. The additional causes of depression that uh, we know is there, but it is not mentioned here. What are they? We mentioned, for example, the temperament. You know, some people have the temperament. Temperament is, that is their nature, you see. A temperament is like that. That is easily, easily they drown into depression more easily than the others. That's their constitution. That is the way they are made up emotionally, mentally. That's what temperament is. They're more inclined to depression than the others. Now, You know it. If you are more inclined to depression than others, you know it. Usually people know it, that they are like that. And if you are inclined to depression more than others, and you know it, if you know that's your weakness, that you quickly descend into depression, I would say to you, really, you got to pay attention to this, and you need to be very careful, because that's your weak spot. That's where the devil gets in, he uses that for his advantage, you know, to drown you in that. Therefore, you need to be careful. You need to be careful about what you're feeding yourself. You need to be careful not to feed doubts. You need to be careful to feed faith. You need to be careful to hang out with people filled with faith. You need to be careful to be in close touch with God and meditate on God's word, and meditate on positive things, good things at this time, because your natural inclination is to go into things that produce doubt and fear and worry and so on. You descend like that into that. That's your natural tendency, but you need to work against that. You need to cling to God, trust in God, and depend on God's word, and build your faith in you, you know, you got to be very careful about that. Another reason we pointed out is physical conditions. That is, people that are having some physical illnesses. Physical illness itself makes people depressed. You know, once they hear the doctor said that they have sugar or blood pressure or heart problem or something like that, immediately there's this, some people quickly descend into depression. The disease is one thing, but the depression is a greater thing that's affecting them now because they are prone to depression. You got to be very careful. Uh, you know, physical diseases can be overcome with the help of God, you know. Uh, God can give us the wisdom and the strength and the understanding and the healing to really overcome that situation. Don't lose heart. Don't give up. Be bold and be strong. If you are given to depression because of your physical condition and you know that that's what is making you depressed, you got to be very careful. You got to build yourself strong in faith. You got to make sure that you minister to yourself the word of God and uh, really build yourself in the faith. Otherwise, there is danger. Thirdly, I talked about a down reaction after a great blessing. What do I mean? Like Elijah had a wonderful career as a prophet. And he warned the king that it won't rain and it stopped raining. Then he said he, the rain will come and the rain came. And 
he won the challenge against the Baal prophets, brought fire down from heaven, and it consumed all the sacrifice. He had a great blessed time, God's power showing up, God proving that he is right, God authenticating, vindicating his stand in front of the nation, people turning to God, a great a revival happening really in that nation because of what Elijah did with the Baal prophets and so on. And then he gets depressed because Jezebel challenged him, wanted to kill him, wants to die, wants to, he wants, he's finished, he says, wants to die, got very depressed. And I showed you how God ministered to him. See, what I'm saying is when you have a great success sometimes and then there is a, coming down from it, you know, there is a fall back from it. That produces great depression. Many of us have had great successes in our businesses, in our things, and, and a setback such as this could cause depression. And uh, you need to be very careful. A setback is a setback. It's only temporary. It is not a permanent thing. It's something temporary. We got to go through that. It's like crossing the waters and walking through the fire, you know. The Bible says when you cross the waters, when you cross the rivers, it will not drown you. You will not be drowned in it. Yeah, you will have to cross it, but you will not be drowned by it. God is with you. God is with you. And when you have to pass through fires, it will not burn you. God says that. It will not burn you. Believe that, my friend. God was with Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. God was with Daniel at the lion's den. God is with you. So take heart. You need to build yourself in the faith. You've got to watch out. Then there is the attack of Satan. Another reason. Satan always tries to get our eyes off of God and God's word. And, uh, and our eyes on the problems, on the circumstances and the situations. And he likes to drown us in depression. Be very careful. When that happens when you're overly concerned about the things of the world. When there is the worry about the things of the world. That is not from God, my friend. The Bible says, do not worry. Do not worry about what you'll eat, what you'll drink, what you'll be clothed. Do not worry. Worry is not from God. When you have fear, know that it's not from God. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. You better realize that fear is not from God. So you know when Satan is attacking, he attacks through worries, fears, and so on. All right. And simple unbelief you know, is one of the most important causes of depression. All of a sudden, you Quit believing and allow unbelief in your heart. And unbelief will lead you to failure. Unbelief will lead you to powerlessness. Faith leads you to power, you see. All right, so these are some of the reasons. And there are some more reasons, you see. Let's first pray about these things. These things that I mentioned just now. Temperament, physical sicknesses. Down reaction after great blessing, you know, Satan's attack, simple unbelief. These are some of the things that I just mentioned. Let's all pray about this. I want you to pray for your family members. Sometimes children are like that. One of your children will be like that. They're easy to be depressed than the other child, you know. Within one family, you'll find such differences. Sometimes the husband is like that. Wife is like that. Parents are like that. You know, we need to have some understanding about these things. We need to understand these things very importantly. And we, be, we should be, as Christians, be able to minister to them. So let's pray for such people, the people with temperamental problems, you know. Temperament that is leading them into depression. These people that have physical conditions and that they are, they are depressed because of that. You know, some people are like that. And then there is, there are people that have had a good life, but all of a sudden things are suffering a setback. They are into depression. 
pray let's pray for them and people that are undergoing attacks of satan and unbelief and so on let's pray just a minute oh thank you lord thank you father father we pray for members of our families be our children our our family members oh father oh i pray that your hand of protection will be upon our family oh god oh thank you father we know that some of us are very feeble in our hearts and some of us are weak in this matter that uh, we are given to depression very easily and uh, things really bother us and things really trouble us in our hearts very much uh, but we come to you oh father you are our strength you are our health you are our medicine you are our fortress you are strong tower oh god i pray that you will protect uh, the children protect uh, our spouses you protect uh, each one of us oh god each one of us i pray for the families of the church the people that are sitting at home today there are so many kinds of people oh god going through so many issues there are so many mental and emotional levels today undergoing maybe sometimes depression and and facing a very disheartening situation oh god concerned worried troubled in their hearts as to how they will meet the obligations that are coming up and so on father i pray that they will be able to cast all their burdens on you o oh father that you will open doors and you will open ways for them and and that you will cause everything to work for their in their favor o oh god that this thing will pass this difficult time will pass that they will be able to see the light of day and be able to come out of this successfully with your help oh god even though we walk through the valley of shadow of death we'll fear no evil for you are with us your rod and your staff they comfort us oh god may the word of god may the spirit of god be our comfort and our strength as we go through this oh father thank you lord thank you jesus i mentioned some other things also great disappointment in life that brings depression some personal failure we are human beings we fail we do things wrong sometimes yeah you know we're not perfect and it causes great depression you know there are people today maybe you have failed in some way morally financially or in some way you know uh, there has been a failure in your life and i tell you my friend there's not this is not the time to beat yourself <laughs> over it you know it is not the time to kill yourself with the feelings of condemnation rise up from that oh my friend god is with you god will help you god understands your problems god knows your difficulties rise up from that difficulty some people are even depressed when they're getting old you know the feeling of getting old brings great depression when they retire itself some people fall into depression there are very important things that to notice in life let's pray let's let god help these people father god i pray for people that are undergoing disappointments in life and depression because of disappointments pray for people that have experienced personal failures and they feel terrible and they feel down and they're not able to face others they're condemning themselves and i pray that you'll give them hope in their hearts today oh father hope in their heart encouragement in their hearts oh thank you father let them expect god to do great things in their lives oh god let them not give up their hope oh father thank you lord let them not allow the disappointments in life that come our way to pull them down permanently oh father help them to realize that this are these are just passing things that they have to go through but they can come out of it with god's help thank you father thank you jesus people people that are getting old we pray for people that are aging and because of that they enter into depression pray that you that you will encourage their hearts that getting old is nothing bad that that they have talents and abilities knowledge and wisdom that others don't have and i pray that you will open up opportunities for them to use that and be busy with learning things and doing things and helping others and and so on oh father i pray that they will be able to encourage themselves and deal with this thing oh father and not get into depression oh father thank you father thank you jesus thank you lord well let's talk about the cure for depression 
The cure for depression here is mentioned in a verse that appears three times almost exactly as it is. You know, some minor differences sometimes, but exactly as it is. The verse I'm referring to is verse five. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. The same verse comes in verse 11. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. And the same verse, exact same verse in verse 5. See, that is why they believe that these two Psalms belong together. We need to consider them together. It's like one Psalm, basically. Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Three times these words appear again and again. There is something in it. You see, when spiritual depression comes or when depression comes, people react in so many ways. Some people try entertainment, you know. One of the saddest things you'll see in hospitals is people are dying In sickness, they're playing some movies for them, you know. And so loudly, it just keeps on going and they can't even think. And, uh, you know, their mind is occupied with these things. They think it's a great help to relieve them from thinking about, uh, you know, anything else. Uh, they turn the TV on, you know. I've been admitted in the hospital before, but I went there ready with a tape recorder, with some tapes back in those days. and started hearing the wonderful word of God about healing, about faith and all of these things. And uh, I didn't waste any time. All day, throughout the day, I'll play that thing. Keep it right next to my head. Keep playing those things and keep hearing those things. Keep building myself up until I got out. I had to do it because, you know, the situation was such So we, need, we should not take the wrong turn, you know. The entertainment is not the answer. Some people resort to sleeping pills just because they don't get sleep. I say to them, listen, God gives his beloved sleep, the Bible says. Have you read that? <laughs> sleep is a gift from God, my friend. Believe in that. Receive that from God. Every night before you go to sleep, pray that prayer that I taught you in church about uh, praying before you get to sleep. After you do your regular prayer and everything, when you lay down yourself to sleep, pray this little small prayer. Just say, Lord, I thank you because the one who guards and keeps me never sleeps, never slumbers. You are watching over me. I thank you. No evil shall befall me. I'm in your safe hands. Thank you, Lord. And then you say, Lord, When I sleep, I lay all my burdens down on you. I will not carry burdens as I sleep. My worries and my burdens, my concerns, I lay them down. And I know that while I'm sleeping, you're working out solutions for my problems. While I'm sleeping, you're busy. Your angels are busy. All of heaven is busy working on my behalf to make my tomorrow a better day, to open doors for me, to cause things to happen. for me, that'll help me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for better days ahead. Thank you for your arranging it. I trust in you that every day you're working on it. You're working all the time. Even while I'm sleeping, you're working on it. Therefore, I'll sleep in peace. Thank you for giving me sleep. That's it. And you sleep. God gives sleep. And some people sometimes end up taking habit-forming drugs, you know, because of depression, you know. One person told me, well, when I get depressed, I eat a lot. <laughs> I feel better when I eat. You know, I feel like I'm handling my depression. You know, no, you'll be more depressed when you find eating too much has brought other problems, you know. So that's not the answer. One person said to me, well, I, well when, when I'm depressed, I go shopping. I go hit the mall and just buy things that I, as I see, you know, just splurge. spend and have a good time because I'm depressed. 
Well, you'll be depressed when you've spent more money than you ought to have and, uh, and wasted them on things that are, that are not serving any purpose, you see. Uh, see, that, those are unreal answers, you know. They, they may help your spirit a little bit for a short time, for a few minutes or a few days, but it won't really help you. What does the author suggest here as answer? The answer is in that verse, which appears three times. One is, the psalmist takes himself by his hand. That is, he reaches out to himself and raises himself up from that depression. How does he do it? He says, why are you cast down? O oh, my soul. And why are you disquieted within me? See, one of the things that Christians have to learn is to be able to speak to your emotions, to your minds, to your feelings, rather than have your feelings and emotions dictate to your mind. You need to speak to them. You need to say, why are you disquieted? Why are you cast down? Why? Are you disquieted within me? Why? Why? You need to ask the question that is stretching your hand out to pick yourself up. <laughs> you don't need anybody else. God has given you this wonderful ability, the power, the ability to speak words. God has given you a mouth, the ability to speak. You begin to open your mouth and speak. Why are you cast down? Why are you disquieted? So that is one way to deal with your problems. You need to really understand that there is no need to be cast down, no need to be down at all. That you need to speak to your mind, speak to your heart, preach to yourself. You need to address yourself, question yourself, you know. What business have you got to be cast down? What is this thing? Why are you down? Why are you disquieted? You've got to question yourself. You've got to upbraid yourself. You've got to exhort yourself. You've got to say to yourself, hope in God. You must understand that this is a struggle between the spirit of faith and the spirit of dejection between the higher nature and the lower nature, between the spirit and the flesh. It's a battle. You need to understand that. Not allow the flesh to overtake the spirit. Not allow the spirit of dejection to rule. Not allow the lower nature to dominate. You've got what is called the spirit of faith. Paul says, we have the same spirit of faith. Therefore, we speak. <laughs> same spirit of faith. We have the same spirit of faith as our forefathers that we read about in the Bible, the men of faith. And when you have the spirit of faith, you speak. You speak. Faith reveals itself through words. So that's the thing that you need to do. Secondly, so first is you need to pick yourself up by your own hands. That is, speak to yourself. Right? Secondly, the psalmist challenges himself to do what should be done. How does he challenge himself? He knows what he needs to do in a situation like this. He knows what should be done. So he looks at himself and he says, Put your hope in God. Hope in God, he says. Hope in God. What wonderful words. Put your hope in God. There can be no lasting hope in anything else in this world. The world is a failing world. It's a sinful world. The world has nothing to offer to us. Don't look to the world for your comfort. Don't look to the world for your answers. 
Don't look to the world. There's nothing to give to us. We have something to give to the world. The Bible says we are the salt. We are the light of the world. The world is looking to us for answers. We have the answers, my friend. Because we are people who are connected with God. We trust in God. We have our faith in God. We know what God has done in the past. During times like this, I always think about what God has done for me before. The things that God has done for me. Always think that. When I think of things that God has done for me, I always say to myself, God can do it again. God can do it again. God can do it again. Amen? God can do it again. You want to pray? I feel like praying. Some people need to reach out their own hand and pick themselves up. <laughs> It's the time to do that. How do you do that? You say, why are you cast down? What's your problem? You have no business to be down. Tell yourself that. You have no business to be down. No business to be down. No business to be down. Get up. Get right. Hope in God. Let's do that. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come. We thank you, Lord, for these words. We know that you're reaching out to us through these words. You're ministering to us right now with these words, oh God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So we say to our souls, we say to our mind, we say to our heart, we say to our emotions, why are you cast down? What's, what business do you have to be cast down? What reason do you have to be cast down? You have a great, amazing, wonderful God. You're connected to him. He is your heavenly father. Why are you disquieted within yourself? Hope in God. Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. Speak to your heart, my friend. Speak to your mind. Put your hope in God. Sam, put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. In hopeless times, put your hope in God. The world is hopeless, but God is a God of hope. Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God, in God, in God, in God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I put my hope in you. Not in this world. The world has nothing to give me. The world is hopeless. There is no hope in this world. I refuse to look at this world for my comfort, for my strength, for my answers, to help me. The world is not my answer. The world doesn't have things to give to me. But my hope is in you, Lord. My hope is in you. You are the answer. I look to you. My eyes are upon you, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I say to my soul, do not be cast down. You have no business to be cast down. Put your hope in God. Set your eyes on God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, thirdly, he points to a certainty, something that is sure. He mentions that there is something that is very sure. He is very sure about something. Because he says here, in the end, open God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. For I shall yet praise him. I shall yet praise him. Literally means that this is a great certainty that things are not over. I'm going to have the victory. I'm going to have the last laugh. I'm going to really take the victory. God has not changed. His purposes for me has not changed. He has led me to victories in the past and he will lead me again. He will do it again in my life. So I say to myself, I will yet praise him. I will yet praise him. 
There's going to be more praise going to come to come from me because I'm going to experience great victories. I'm looking for great days ahead, great rejoicing, great victories. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for you will do it again in our lives. Thank you for you'll be with us. You will shield us, you will cover us, you will lead us, you will guide us, you will bless us. Thank you for your countenance. Thank you for the help of your countenance, O oh God. Thank you for you have not turned your face away from us, that your loving face is turned towards us to do us favor, to give us help. You're reaching out to us. Thank you for your countenance, the help of your countenance. I will yet praise you, Lord. I will yet praise God. I will yet praise God. It's not over. I will not be defeated. I will yet praise God. Praise God. I will yet praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I will yet praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Then let me read to you Psalm 43, verse 2, 3, and 4. Look at how he's recovering from his depression. It's amazing. He says, for you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill. See, his problem was he was not able to go to the holy hill where God dwells, to the place of worship. He's far away from it. Now he says, why do I have to go around mourning like this? Because of the oppression of the enemy. Send your light, Lord. Send your truth and lead me to that holy hill, he says. Take me back there to that holy hill, to that place of worship, and to your tabernacle. <laughs> See how faith has come now. Depression is leaving. He begins to talk about coming back. He's beginning to talk about coming back to God's holy hill, coming back to his tabernacle, coming back to the place of worship, he sees himself going there with singing and dancing and praising and worshiping, rejoicing in God, going there with the people of God. He's looking at himself and seeing himself back in that same position, seeing himself as he used to be back in those days. He sees that God will do it again. He says, send me the light and your truth and take me back to your temple, take me back to your tabernacle, he says. Let your truth and your light bring me back there. Let your truth and your light bring me back there. And then he says, then I will go to the altar of God to guard my exceeding joy. And on the harp, I will praise you. Oh my God, he sees himself again getting on the music instrument, singing, praising, serving God in that way, in his music, through his music. Going to the altar of God, to the God who's my exceeding joy, he says. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to see yourself back in the same condition, same place where you were before. See yourself raising yourself back again, going back by the grace of God. Through the light and truth of God's word, you're taken back. Your situations are reversed, brought back. See yourself in that way. See yourself in that way. See yourself in that way. See yourself in that way, my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we pray? Just praise God because you see yourself back. Back in the place of worship. Back at work. Back doing things for God. Back living for God. See yourself and the restoration of all things that you've lost. See yourself with that. See yourself like that. And praise God for that. Say, oh God, I thank you because your truth and your light will, be bring, me, will bring me back there. It may look dark right now, but your truth and your light is good enough to take me back to where I was, to the place of that blessing, to the place of my joy, my exceeding gladness, to my God, to the altar of God, to the tabernacle of God. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful grace upon our lives. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for being with us in this tough time. Thank you for helping us through this time. Thank you for sending your word to us today to help us, to restore us, to bring us back. Thank you for your word that has reached out to us, quickened us, and helped us today. Thank you, Father. Bless the people. Bless the families. Bless each one in the family. Let everybody feel their spirit quickened today. May they experience the quickening of the spirit. May the oppression be gone. May worries and fears be broken in the name of Jesus. May there be real joy, real gladness in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you, my friend.